Hi guys and welcome to today's video. So today I'm going to tell you some hints and tips on how to revise A-level English literature. So I'm currently in a gap year, so I finished my A-levels this past year and my A-levels were the last year to do AS and A-level, but in my A-level year I got two A's, so out of the four exams I did in total over the two years I got three A's and a C. Um, the C is a completely different story, they lost my exam paper, it was very stressful. So I do know a little bit about how to revise English Lit and I'm going on to do English Lit next year at uni because I'm in a gap here at the moment so I thought I would share with you how I revised this past year. So I did AQA board but obviously these are quite generic hints and tips so definitely keep watching even if you're not an AQA and even if you're doing GCSE and not A level keep watching as well because I did exactly the same for GCSE basically. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you know the eight different eras of literature well. You want to know the key facts for each each section of time. So that's going from medieval era to postmodern, which is what we're in now. So there's eight different eras. So I personally made cards with them all on, with the dates and also little facts about them. So you've got the medieval era, then the Elizabethans, the Jacobean, Restoration, Romanticism, Victorian era, Modernist and Postmodernist. So I would definitely recommend having little cards like this that you read just before your exam and in the days leading up to your exam as well, just so you know all the facts. In terms of facts, I think you need to know kind of what was going on at the time. So if there were any wars, who was the king or queen of the country? Um, you also want to make sure that you know how women were seen and treated, how different races were seen and treated and how different sexualities were seen and treated as well. That's really important in terms of analysing the different texts. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how I prepared to revise before I got to the revision stage. So this is what you can do whilst you're studying before you hit that revision stage. I know quite a lot of you will be going into mocks in January, which is why I was filming this video now to help you out for your mocks. But basically, when you're reading, when you are reading your texts, you want them to look like this. All of my books pretty much look like this. I get the little sticky, so they're not, you can use the big sticky notes, I've got like one in here because I ran out of little ones, but the little ones, every time you're reading and you see a quote that relates to the topic you are studying, so I did Love Through the Ages, so it could be about any kind of love, um, you just want to highlight and then sticky note where those quotes are. So. This one was one of my coursework books, so obviously I read it really in depth because I had a couple of months to make sure that my coursework was absolutely perfect. Obviously I did not use all of these quotes in my coursework, but it means that when you're looking for quotes, I basically do this, then once I finished reading the book, I would go to every single quote and write them all out on a piece of paper. And then I would pick which ones were the best, and I would then transfer them onto a quote card and I can honestly say I did this for every single subject I did during GCSE and A level and I would take these just before the exam and I would read and read and read through them. The amount of times I wrote out all of these quotes is ridiculous. You want to write them out leading up to your exams throughout the year just so you know them off the top of your head and you know them as well as possible and I definitely suggest I was one of those people that liked to be on my own before an exam so I could just read and read and read so that I'd have them in my head so obviously you need to have quite a few texts especially if you're doing A level you're meant to read around your subject as well as obviously doing the text you do in class so my camera battery just died, <laughs> I went and had lunch and now I'm back after it is charged a bit so hopefully it won't die on me this time, fingers crossed. So I kind of cheated with my wider reading I'm going to say, the, the only thing I actually read that we didn't do in class or used, I used this in the exam which we didn't do in class is this one, 
this one, my favourite. Um, we did it in GCSE, which is why it looks like this. But honestly, you can't go wrong with Romeo and Juliet, especially in Love Through the Ages. Absolutely perfect. And um, in my exam, so we were all stood before our A-level exam and we were like, okay, what do we want, what do we want? So you get like, there's two exams, two hour exams within two hours. So there was like, we had two poems and then a novel and a play. So before we were like, what do we want, what do we want? We were like modern, postmodern for everything and then a Shakespeare and we wanted two poems together and then a novel and a play. And that's what we got, so it was amazing. So the we got The Tempest, and it was the scene where they're kind of like trying to persuade the father that they that they want to get married, and the father's a bit dubious, but then he's like, yes. So Romeo and Juliet was obviously the perfect one for that because it is also about love going beyond um, like family, which was good. And I think I used the quote, which is, Deny thy father and refuse thy name, or if thou will not be but sworn my love and I will no longer be a Capulet. That's quite a good quote for if you're doing the AQA one and it's on love. So obviously you don't want to use too much Shakespeare though, because it is quite common, especially Romeo and Juliet. I did use other stuff as well, but I can't remember exactly what I used. So for our coursework, all of us had to do Othello as the main one, and then we got to pick a question which had two books by it as well. So I did Tess of the Durbervilles and The Woman Who Walked Into Doors as well, as I already said. So obviously you want to make sure that you're reading kind of a range of different eras. Like I said, to rem like know the eras, you want to make sure that you've read a bit from each era. So. The only era that wouldn't come up in our exam was Chaucer, but we had to study it. I kind of counted the stuff we did in class as wider reading, and as long as you read it in enough depth and take enough quotes out of it and take enough from it, I'd say you're fine, that your English teacher will probably not agree with me, but I got an A just from doing that. If you want to get an A star, I would probably say you need to do a little bit more wider reading. So we did atonement in class. This one is amazing it's wartime England oh yeah the other one I did for wider reading I used bird song as well which we had we hadn't done in our first year but some people do on the course so that one's a really good one as well because that's obviously wartime France and love so this one instead of highlighting it and tagging it as I went along I kind of wrote down there's odd bits where I've just really done it in depth, so I didn't have too many quotes from this one, but I picked the ones that were best for my course. Honestly, that's the thing that I'm saying is make sure whatever you're reading, make sure the quotes you're picking are like the ones that are perfect for your course. So obviously, with me I was doing Love Through the Ages, so it could be basically anything. It could be, you know, romantic love, sibling love, forbidden love family love and then also there's love for other things as well that didn't have to be between people so there was a lot of scope and I know not every course is going to have that kind of scope as long as you're reading with the purpose of analysing and picking out the best quotes you possibly can to use to support points then that's honestly all you need to do you also need to make sure that you're getting enough of the different the three different categories so Poetry, prose and drama. So for drama, we did The Rise and Fall of Little Voice, Postmodern, Streetcar Named Desire as Modern, and then obviously there's was Othello, because we did that one for our coursework. And then obviously I did Romeo and Juliet as my wider reading. Obviously you could use any of Shakespeare's plays. Personally, Romeo and Juliet is my favorite. It's the one that kind of made me fall in love with Shakespeare, so that was the one I went for because I know it like the back of my hand. And honestly, to do well in the exams, I think you need to know the books and the plays like the back of your hand. Poetry, on the other hand, you just kind of need to know a little bit, I'd say. So we did quite a lot of Keats. Our teachers gave us a lot of poems. We did a lot of poetry in class, and that's where I got all my poetry quotes from. You don't need to remember like 10 poems, 
word for word, you just need to pick out the best bits from the poems again. So I have like enough on, it's just over one side of poems and these are quite small cards, I think they're like A5. Um, I get them in a local like, it's like a post office and news agents and they do stationery as well. So I got them in there and obviously with poetry you also want to make sure that you've got ones from different centuries and the different eras so I've started with the 16th century and Ben Johnson and then I've ended with Carol Ann Duffy from Postmodern. So yeah with the poetry just explore a range of poetry from different eras whether I don't know just just explore poetry quite a lot. Also when you're doing poetry you want to make sure like with the books and plays that you know about the author, about the poet, because that's also really important when you're analysing. So when you get your unseen text in your exam, if there's something similar, you can be like, and you don't know the author of the unknown one, you can be like, maybe they were similar to this author. Yeah, so context is a really important part in the exam, so you want to make sure that you know the authors and the poets of your wider reading really well, so that when you are analysing your unseen text in the exam, you can bring context in through your wider reading, because obviously with the unseen text you're only going to be given the date and who they were written by, so you can only really do the historical context, so you need to bring in like the context from your wider reading a little bit more. I always think that's quite a good idea. So the other book we did was Wuthering Heights and I think again this one is a really good one for romanticism and gothic literature. So just to round off my key tips are make sure you're preparing to revise as you go along by putting sticky notes in and highlighting key quotes and then when you get to the end of the novel, play, poem, make sure that you've written them all down so that when you come back to revise you can go through them again and be like okay which ones are the best ones for me to use. So that's probably one of the most important things. Then obviously make sure you know your different eras and I really suggest writing them out on a little card, on little cards like this. I found this really helpful and then also make sure you make yourself quote cards for all of the different texts you've read and honestly I've made these like five times and I would carry them around in a little plastic wallet and in my freeze because we had like in A2 I had 12 hours of lessons a week but the school was timetabled for 24 so obviously I had 12 hours free at school every single week so I would go and sit in one of the study rooms and get out like my notepad and write these out over and over and over again just so you know them you want to make sure you know your quotes as well as the plot lines like the back of your hand and then you also want to make sure you know the authors really well that you've studied and then apart from that you really just want to make sure you're practicing and practicing and making sure that when you're reading a book analyze it, don't just read it, make sure you're analyzing it. I read so slowly because when I read I analyze all the time. So I hope you guys found that video helpful but I hope that this gave you a few like hints and tips on how to revise for English literature and honestly I mean I really enjoyed English which is why I'm doing it next year at uni obviously but you just need to make sure you know the text and you kind of make sure you're having insights into the text as well because when you're sat in that exam you need to read through those unseen texts as quickly as possible, highlight the key bits, make a few notes about the insights and just like write, write everything and support it with the texts, with your text that you've already done throughout the year. So I hope you enjoyed that video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you next time.